Gradient Descent is one of the first algorithms you learn in machine learning. It is one of the most popular optimization algorithms for training a machine learning model. This iterative, first-order algorithm is used to find the local minima or maxima of a function. In machine learning, we use this algorithm to minimize a cost or loss function, usually in a linear regression. To understand all of these definitions, we need to understand what a machine actually learns. In simple terms, a model learns a function f such that f of x maps to y. You remember the slope-intercept form of a line, y equals mx plus b. In machine learning, your algorithm is trying to predict the values of y. To do that, it has to find values of m and b so that the predictions can be as close as possible to the actual answers. The m variable would be an r-dimensional parameter vector. The x variable would be an r-dimensional feature vector and b would be the bias. You can think of the parameter vector as the weights of the model. This parameter vector is what the model updates every iteration. The features in the feature vector are values used to define how the function behaves based on the input. For example, a model created to approve someone for a credit card would have many features, age, income, sex, credit score, etc. Anytime you try those inputs for x, we want y to be an accurate result to approve or deny. To train the model, we have to find the optimal values for m and b. How do we do that? We minimize the loss cost function. There are multiple loss cost functions to pick from, but a pretty popular one is called the mean squared error loss function, or MSC. If you look at the function, it takes the model's predicted output and subtracts it by the actual output, squares it, and then takes its average, one over n, where n is the number of iterations. Let's look at a real world example of this. Let's say I took an exam that had 10 questions. After the answer key was published, I decided to compare my answers to see how well I did. If my answer, f of xi, and the real answer, yi, has a difference of zero, that means I got the answer 100% correct. And if this was a machine learning model, it would imply that I have the best model for the task. Notice that we square the function to accentuate the error, as well as get rid of any negatives. This is because the error can come from the left or right side, too high of a prediction or too low of a prediction. Before I continue, make sure you subscribe to my channel. This is the first video of a series I'm doing called From Scratch, where I'm going to break down machine learning. Anyways, we have enough context now to start getting into the gradient descent algorithm. This algorithm allows us to minimize our loss cost function so that we get more accurate predictions. Finding or getting close to the minima of a function allows us to fine tune the parameters to find the convergence point where the model stops learning. You can think of the gradient as the slope of the function. Let's look at some of the math. First of all, the gradient descent algorithm doesn't work on all functions. For it to work, a function has to be differentiable, which means having a derivative at every point in its domain and being convex. For a univariate convex function, this means being able to create a line segment connecting two points in the function that lay on or above the curve. If it crosses the curve, then that means it has a local minima and not a global one. You can check mathematically if a univariate function is convex by taking the second derivative of the function. If its value is always bigger than zero, then you have a convex function. This works because it tells you if f of x is increasing on both sides. Let's look at a simple quadratic function, f of x equals x squared plus 3x minus 1. Taking the first derivative, we get 2x plus 3. Taking the second derivative, we get 2. Since 2 is greater than 0, this function is convex. It is possible to use this algorithm with quasi-convex functions, but the algorithm has a chance to get stuck. I'll show this in the programming section later in the video. Quasi-convex functions are functions where they are convex over certain parts over their domain, but lose that quality over other parts. This introduces things like saddle points, which are points in the function where the slope is 0 but it isn't a local extremum. Multivariate functions require further calculation to determine saddle points with things like the Hessian matrix, which I'll go over in a later video. Anyways, back to the gradient. A gradient is the slope of a curve at a given point in a specified direction. In univariate functions, this would be the first derivative. In multivariate functions, it would be a vector of derivatives. Since we only care about the slope of one axis, we take what is called a partial derivative. Partial derivatives are derivatives in which part of an expression can be grouped into a variable, not derived with the rest. A gradient for an n-dimensional function f of x at a given point p looks like this. The upside down triangle is called the del or nabla. It just means we are denoting the gradient of the function f of x at point p. Let's look at this two-dimensional function, 1.5x squared plus y squared. If I wanted to calculate the gradient at the point 5, 5, taking the partial derivatives, we get 3x with respect to x, and 2y with respect to y. 
This means our gradient vector looks like this, x, y equals 3x and 2y in the vector. Plugging in the points x equals 5 and y equals 5, we get the gradient vector 15 and 10. This means our slope is one third less steep on the y axis. Now let's look at the gradient descent algorithm. The algorithm iteratively calculates the next point using the gradient at the current position, pn, scales it by a learning rate we can call r, and then subtracts it from the current position. This gives us the next point, or pn plus 1. The learning rate r is an important value as it influences the performance of the minimization. Depending on the rate, the algorithm might take short shorter or longer to find the minima of a function. If the learning rate is too high, it might take bigger steps than needed and miss the minimization point entirely. Let's simplify the process of gradient descent. First, it chooses a starting point. Next, it calculates the gradient at this point. Third, it jumps to the next step in the opposite direction. Now repeat two and three until either the maximum number of operations are reached or the step size is smaller than your tolerance value. Your tolerance value is what stops the algorithm in case it reaches a close enough value where another jump wouldn't make sense. Now that I've explained mostly everything, let's code it up. So the first thing you want to do is create a virtual environment. So if you have conda, you can just do conda create and then dash dash name and then the name of your virtual environment. If you already have one, you can just do conda activate and type in the name. You can see here I'm already in a virtual environment. So we only need to install two things. So you can just type pip3 install numpy. You can see I already have it installed. And the other thing we need to install is matplotlib. And this is going to help us plot our results. So just type pip3 install matplotlib. And there you go. I already have it. So once you do that, just create a new Python file. So now let's import numpy. So import numpy as np. And we can also import our matplotlib. So let's do from matplotlib import pyplot as plt. So now that we have our inputs squared away, let's create the gradient descent function. Before we start coding, let's think about the parameters we need for this algorithm. The first parameter is going to be the start value, basically what point we start the gradient descent algorithm at. The next point is going to be the actual gradient function. And we can just type the gradient function and this is going to be the derivative of our function. The next parameter is going to be the learning rate. And this is how much we scale by or the R in the previous equation I showed you before the coding part. Now our next parameter is going to be max iterations and this is basically a limit on how many jumps we want. Basically if it doesn't reach the local minima we just want to stop instead of having it go forever. And the last parameter that we need is tolerance. And this is how close we want to be able to get to the minima and also the value to stop the algo at. So how close to minima. So now we can actually code the function. So let's define gradient descent and then give it all the parameters. So start value, gradient function, the learning rate, max iterations, tolerance, and we can set the tolerance to 0.01. That's the default value. Colon. The first thing we're going to do is declare a steps array. So instead of just doing this and using the Python array, we're going to do mp.array. And we're going to pass the start value in there. So the first value of the array is going to be the start value. Now we can set our x value equal to the start value. And let's create our loop. So this is going to be the number of iterations. So for underscore in range max iterations. We want to set this difference variable equal to the learning rate times the gradient function. So this will give us the value of x passed into the gradient function times our basically the derivative of f of x with the start value as the input times the learning rate. Now we want to add a conditional. So now I'm going to use the numpy library to convert this value to an absolute value. So no matter if it's negative or positive, it will always be positive. We're going to check if that value is less than our tolerance, then we want to break the loop because we've reached a value close enough to the minima where we don't want to jump again. So that's what our tolerance value is for. To get the next step, we can just do x equals x minus our difference. And this gives us the next jump. Now, all you want to do with this value is append it to the steps array. So you can set steps equals to mp.append 
Steps is the first parameter, and this is the array you want to append to, and then x, the value we want to append to the array. Now, all we have to do for this function is return steps, and then x, and that's it. Our algorithm is coded up. Now we need to write the code for the functions we're going to put into this algorithm. So the first example here is a quadratic function, and it's just x squared plus 4x plus 1. The derivative of this function is 2x plus 4. So to code it up, you can just make another function in Python, and let's do example function 1. And then the parameter is just going to be x. And to code this in Python, we just need to simply give the same values. So x to the power of 2 plus 4 times x plus 1. So this is us writing this function in Python, f of x. So now we want to write the function for the gradient. So that's going to be example gradient in parentheses, also x. I'm going to add an example gradient 1. Now we just code up the derivative, so return 2 times x plus 4. And now we can create two new variables, history and result. And we can set it to our function, gradient descent. Let's give it a start value of 9. So we're going to start at x equals 9. Let's pass it in the gradient function that we coded, so the derivative. And then learning rate, let's set that to 0.1. For max iterations, let's only do 100. And then tolerance is already 0 0.01, so I'm not going to change that. And if we print these results, let's run it. Python 3 gradient descent. And you can see that we have our jumps. So it starts at 9, it jumps to 6.8, 5.04, 3.6, etc., etc. And then it finishes on this value, negative 1.95. So this is the closest to our minima with our parameters. Let's use matplotlib to actually plot this so you can see what's going on. So under our results line, let's create an array full of the data points we're going to plot. So function data points, and let's set this to a numpy function lin space, which creates an array with the values that we need. So we want it to go from x equals negative 14 to x equals 10, and then we want 100 values in between. So this creates an array from x equals negative 14 to x equals 10 with 100 values in between. And to plot some of the points, we're just gonna create two new variables, fig and ax, and we're gonna set this equal to plt.subplot, subplots, and we're gonna give it a parameter fig size, we can do 8, 12, and this will just help us plot our points in the text. So let's set this equal to. Next, let's plot our actual data points, so plt.plot. The parameters go x to y, so we want to, so here we're plotting just the line. So we're gonna take our generated data points and then the second y, we want to set this to example function one and then you wanna pass in the function data points. So this is our f of x and then this is our x. And this will plot the, the line with our domain. Now we wanna do a second plot so you can see the actual points. So let's plot the history and then pass it to example function one again, pass history. And then here we're gonna add another parameter called marker and this will just give us points now you want to write one more loop for each point in range history so for each step we want to just label the point and the number of the steps so you're going to type ax.text we're going to do history i minus 0.1 so this is going to move the text a little bit so it's not blocking our point and then let's do example function one put in our history, get the whatever iteration it is on there, and then we wanna do minus five. And this will basically move our text down a little bit on the Y axis, so the points aren't blocked. Now the last one is actually the text that we wanna draw, so I'm gonna add a conditional. We wanna put the step number if I is less than eight, so about eight steps, and then after that they get too close together, and I don't wanna, I don't wanna actually draw the text, otherwise it gets too convoluted. So I if I is less than eight, else, just do nothing. And now the final command you need is plt.show. This will actually show our graph. So if you run this again, I actually accidentally forgot to do length of history. And then let's run it again. Whoa, that's too vertical. Let's change this to 12, 8 instead. So it's more horizontal and we can see more. And boom, there you go. So you can see all of our steps and they're labeled and they stop after seven, very close together. And yeah, there we go. That's our gradient descent algorithm working. And notice this is with a learning rate 0.1. So if I change this to so if I change this to a larger learning rate, like 0.9, you can see that the jumps are going to be a lot more wider and it's going to take more iterations to find the minima. It looks kind of cool as it zigzags back and forth though. So let's look at a quasi-convex function, a function that is almost convex and it has the properties, but it has these saddle points that I talked about earlier. 
So this is a quasi-convex function, x to the fourth minus 2x to the third plus 2. The derivative of this function is 4x to the third minus 6x to the second. So let's plug it in and see what happens with our algorithm. Let's see what happens when our algorithm, let's see what happens when our algorithm encounters a quasi-convex function. Right, let's change this to example quasi-gradient one and then I'm gonna set this back to 0.1 and let's see what happens. And let's change our domain from negative one to one. Let's do negative one to two and set our starting point to two. Oh, and then let me plot the right functions as well. So example, quasi function, quasi function. Here we need to do the same thing and same here. So now you can see this is a quasi convex function. So it almost has a convex point and then it has the minima here. Okay, there we go. Let's do negative 1.5. 2.5 there we go so now you can see this is kind of a quasi convex function so you can see here let's change it to 2.5 as the starting point and there you go so you can see that it's shot from here to here and because the slope of that is zero it thinks it's done minimizing when the actual one is here so that's why you can really only use gradient descent with actually convex functions but if we do reduce the learning rate a little bit here maybe we can get a better shot at finding it so if i change the learning rate to like 0.01 instead and then we go here you can see that it does find it but if i start from here so let's set negative one as our starting point so you can see it goes all the way down here and it goes to the point where it's zero again which is wrong. So yeah, that is a flaw. That can happen when you're using gradient descent and quasi-convex functions. All this code will be on GitHub. Just click my website link down in the description and you can see all of that with instructions. So yeah, I hope you guys learned something. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to give this video a like and subscribe. I'll be making more content about AI and machine learning soon. Peace.